we so often think that triggers, when we experience a trigger in a relationship, in an interaction, it's always in some kind of interaction, it's unlikely that you feel a trigger just being still on your own. We so often think that triggers are a sign that something's gone wrong. This relationship isn't right. There's something wrong. And yet, a trigger point is actually a, a condensed <laughs> energetic doorway that once again points us back to love. How can that be? Well, let's approach this from a couple of directions. First of all, a trigger, what we experience in a trigger is never about the present. It's never about what's happening here. It's always about the past. It's about something that we, an energetic experience, an energy that we have not met directly in the past because we were too young, we were helpless, we were powerless, we were scared and so on and so on. And the full force of that emotion, that feeling, that energy, whether it be rage, heart, hurt, um, you know, a whole array of <laughs> emotions, energies, were just seeming too much to handle, too much to face. So somehow that energy hasn't been fully met directly. One of the most common ones is rage, right? How many children suppress rage because there's nothing you can really do against your parents. <laughs> so it gets stuffed down. When that energy isn't fully met, then it finds a way through the catalyst of relationship to emerge, to reveal itself. So it's never about what's happening now. That's really important to remember in situ, in relationship, that it's actually not about what's happening now. That gives it a container, yeah. a container that means it doesn't have to, although it can do, but it doesn't have to end up as a, as a, a, a lashing out at the other or at yourself. If you have a container and you know it's actually got nothing to do with what's happening now, but something from the past that wants to come into view and be felt. This gives us, one, it gives us power, <laughs> yeah, because it's not about something that someone's done to us, our partner, the other now. It's something that we can face, we can have the possibility to face. So that gives you a kind of power, a kind of authority. In that, there's a kind of pause, yeah? A spaciousness, just for a moment, even in the midst of the trigger, yeah, it sounds contradictory, but even in the midst of a trigger, there can be a kind of spaciousness. It's just called slowing down, yeah, before lashing out. 
or before withdrawing and, you know, slamming the door, <laughs> running to your room or whatever it is. Yeah. Slowing down gives it space. It's also called presence. So there can be a subtle presence in the midst of a trigger, which is really just an overwhelming energy. Yeah? And in that, that which had seemed to be like an entity that takes us over comes undone at least a little bit. Comes undone and we feel what needs to be felt. To feel what needs to be felt, what wants to be felt, means that blame doesn't come into the picture. We take responsibility for what we feel. And in that, the other can also see us and feel us. There can be presence. So it stops being a ping pong of you did that. Yeah, or whatever it is, yeah, backwards and forwards. It stops being a defense and attack. Another way of saying that is to remain undefended, to remain undefended in the midst of that which seems so threatening. It's not the other that is threatening. It's the feeling, the energy that we haven't been able to feel up until now. In this way, the hard shell, the defended shell of ego self comes undone. 